traditionally, you know, in the eighties, early nineties, we grew up, Hey, be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, to be successful. Okay. Go to college, be successful. Nobody said, Hey, go be a contractor. You can make a lot of money. Truth is a lot of storm restoration contractors on the sales side make more than most medical surgeons, the top ones. Anyways, nobody teaches anybody that in school. What's up, everybody? This is the highly anticipated SVG versus Sky Diamonds, Lee Hate versus Anthony Del Medico podcast. Look, this is years in the making. Um, Anthony is a true pioneer in the roofing industry. He created really the first big time roofing conference for insurance restoration guys. And uh, I was the first guy out with some online training. He had training going on and we've been in competition for like five years. And so it's sort of been a battle royale to see how many blue collar entrepreneurs we could level up. And today on this episode, you're going to learn how a little bit of the old school and the new school systems of how to build eight figure insurance restoration uh, companies like Clockwork, how it works. Uh, We're going to bust each other's balls a little bit, ask each other some tough questions. Um, Both of us have uh, a different way to skin the cat and come from different uh, uh, generations. So you're going to hear kind of uh, two different perspectives of how to scale an insurance restoration and roofing company. Without further ado, my man, the hammer, I've seen him down there carrying the energy for the Win the Storm sales team. Where's Mr. Fucking Tiger? Where's Where's Anthony? What's up? <laughs> yeah, I was busy. I don't know if you heard or not, but we're throwing the biggest conference in the industry in Dallas. Uh, we got yeah. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, I, heard, I, heard, I heard about it, man. I heard about it when money started missing from my checking account. I found out my dad, you've been talking to my dad, you closed my dad. Man. Oh, yeah, I, heard, I heard you booked in, but yeah, guys, hey, I'm excited. Uh, we at SVG are excited to have this uh, th- th- this debate with uh, Lee, uh, Lee Haight and Anthony Del Medico. Uh, they haven't uh, really chatted since 2016, so without further ado, let's go Del Medico! <laughs> What's up, Lee Hate? There he is, AD, my man, Anthony. First of all, I want to say a lot of respect for your organization. I uh, want to thank Mike uh, for kind of being very instrumental in putting a lot of this together. Also, Autumn as well. Uh, but, you know, we got a tough conversation. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, what you get out of this is two different ways to scale roofing companies and find better quality of life. You know, there's uh, – man, I – one day woke up and and suddenly I was sponsoring your conference. I didn't know what the fuck had happened. Well, I think I think that's why this happened. I'm like, who's the National Roofing League? And somebody started talking to Donnie Hate through Autumn through Mike, and I said the Hates are coming. I haven't talked to the Hates. Uh, well, I talked to your dad every once in a while. I haven't talked to Lee Hates since 2016. We've always been kind of like you know. I haven't really been like that, but sometimes Papa bull and young bull. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a head butter and, and we butted heads in the past, but it's just because I didn't like getting left out. We were both selling the same stuff, sales training for roofers and both of us helped a lot of people. Um, I hope to get inside of this episode, ask about your history, the evolution of the early storm days, how it's changed. Also uh, the changes in front of us. But uh, you know, as we get into this, this national roofing league, what it's all about is uh, my dad kind of, wanted a platform. He always uh, wanted an opportunity to speak and we give him an opportunity to speak all the time, but you know, he's got a big idea, a big vision to unite the industry. Um, and it comes across kind of crazy sometimes, but uh, you know, the one thing that he wanted the opportunity to do was talk about his big picture vision. And so um, he went to uh, a solar boot camp with you. I think it was, he learned a little bit about solar. Hey, Jim, and Scott still. Yep. He said he was really impressed with the guys out there teaching uh, solar sales and, you know, he learned a lot. So shout out to your guys out there in Scottsdale. They must have done a good job. But next thing I know, um, he's got this big idea. He's committed to $50,000. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, who's this 50K sponsor? Like, the, like what, the, what, what, in the, what in the hell is going on, Dad? It, it caused a big riff in the family. Um, but, you know, here's the deal. In the end, uh, me and you have been able to come to terms. And, and, and I think it's better for everybody because, uh, you know, I kind of want to know a little bit uh, – you know, growing up as a door to door guy, I would go into neighborhoods and as the guy that was a storm chaser, people would call me a scam artist. They would call me a piece of shit gypsy. They would make up names. We would be on the news. And so I don't know. I mean, I've been dealing with that my whole life. Have you ever been called a scam before? Well, I got in this business in 1999. I think you might've still been in a pair of diapers. 
1999. I was in middle school, bro. Okay, middle school. In 1999, yeah, I started knocking doors, but I, you know, I came in a little differently. I didn't come up through family trades. I wasn't a roofer. Truth is, I never installed a roof. I did a photo op a couple times on some cedar shakes. Now I tested out. You know, I had a, we had licenses in 18 states at one time. Most of those were testing states. Uh, so I tested out and all the codes and all that stuff, but I never actually did the installations. But I was a sales and marketing guy. I left uh, a corporate post MBA job. Got my MBA from University of Minnesota. Did three years in corporate America, and I was in debt up to here with college debt and credit cards. And I met a guy in a bar named Tom Romero. Hopefully, he watches this one day. Say so he's he uh, changed my life, and he got me in as a part time sales guy. And I was really trying to pay off uh, college debt uh, while I was working full time. Kind of fell in love with the sale. We always do the contingency sales and easy sale. It's order taken. So back then, it was order taken. Not so much uh, hard. It, it was hardcore. It's but still it was- order taken, buddy. Come on. Yeah, it's order taken with a lot of nuances around it, you know, like the insurance claims process, but it's order taken at the end of the day, it's insurance proceeds sale. So I fell in love with that. I, I made some money in sales, um, became a Minnesota licensed general contractor in 2001, first office, tail end of a second year storm, not so good, you know, maybe quarter million sales. And then Columbus, Ohio was my big, my, my second big storm. We opened up a deal over there with Able Roofing. And we popped uh, zero to twenty-five million on my second office, and that was the, that was the one that set us on fire. I had a business partner back then, Brian Southern. We had a big breakup in two thousand twelve, which led into SVG, believe it or not. So sometimes a bad thing turns into a good thing. But for for twelve years, we had a great run. Uh, we opened up in, in eighteen physical states. Most of them were licensing states, some not, and uh, had a great run. Did uh, close to one hundred seventy-three million over over almost a twelve-year period. Now that's not a lot today because I know like CMR did 100, 160 million last year, but back in the day it was roughly, you know, fifteen to seventeen million a year, and that was running multiple offices. So for us, it was a good run. You know, until it. Let me check the roofing contractor top one hundred list. It says CMR did less than a hundred million last year. These numbers. This is part of the funny thing about the National Roofing League is they always get inflated. What's roofer math, Anthony? You cut it in half and then cut it in half again. Come on, what is it? You tell me. How do you figure roofer math? Well, in two thousand twelve, my old company Ablard was actually number thirty. I think we were thirty six on yeah. top hundred. And all you had to do is submit your QuickBooks financials. So there's not an audit there. So I. There could be some flub factor on any of those numbers, I suppose. Well, I like to get into the uh, real heart of what we do. We help blue collar entrepreneurs. We help people build character, confidence, financial independence through the same thing. I call it sky diamonds. Yeah, you're winning the storm. Um, but there's been so many of the people multiply. You've you've you had to multiply like bunny rabbits. You've created a lot of uh, spawns, haven't you? We've given birth to a lot of industry entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, even as an owner, when I was an owner operator, you know, I had a lot of guys spin off, start their own business, just like you have. You can't help that. That's part of the industry. I just figured after that happened enough times, I'm like, shit, might as well join them and help them. Mm-hmm. They're going to spin off and do what they do. That's what American entrepreneurs do. That's free enterprise. You can't stop them from doing it. You like to keep your top guys, but you know, some people get the itch. And so eventually, you know, between that and a, a falling out with my old business partner, uh, 2013, we launched SVG. I'm like, shit, let's, Let's help it. And let's be honest, back in the day when you first got in and prior to 2012, especially 1999 to 2012, there really were no conferences, trade shows, and the storm restoration issue. There were no books. There were no products, no training programs. Well, that I could to, be fa- to, to be fair, April and Jacob were doing it first, but then you took it to another level. I mean, you did it a little differently. They, they, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I didn't go to their conferences, but I know that the first – SVG conference I went to was the one Hard Rock I think was was that the second one. The uh, the first Vegas one I believe you went to was 2016 I believe it was at the uh, Hard Rock. That's right. It was it was a big day in my life. I'll take you back to that moment. I was there. Uh, I had announced to the world I closed Grant Cardone. We shook hands on a deal, and now I'm telling all these roofers to come after my deal. And uh, I got 15 minutes to introduce my mentor. Both of us are selling sales training. I'm not supposed to be selling sales training from your stage, but I was there for my little window and I had 15 minutes. I, I said the cockiest, stupidest thing right when I came up into the fucking stage. I felt like I was in a fight and I got hit in the gut. You're like, a lot of you guys might not like me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. No, I don't know exactly how I said. I think, I think that what I said, it like still like, you know, you look back on things, you're embarrassed for yourself. But uh, I think the funny thing was I said, I, I knock more doors than all you in this room. And, you know, knowing what I know about uh, roofers, you try and uh, tell them something like that. And they're like, fuck this guy. And so uh, 
anyway, well, well, I'll tell you what, that was, that was an interesting transition for SVG because back up until that point, we were all books, custom branded contracts, forms, training manuals. We were like a library of stuff. And then me going out and doing, you know, three day consultings. That was cool. But virtual training, uh, having Grant there, uh, of course, I found out that you utilized his virtual training as well. That triggered me to jump into the virtual space. So you got a little, there's a little kudos for you, but really also Grant. Well, that's what I, that's what I naturally wanted to get into the evolution of training. Thank you. Virtual uh, training. Virt I realized that our, our industry is complicated to teach a 20 year old to 25 year old how to knock a door, how to write an estimate, how to do this and this. You know how it is. You go train a guy for three months, you knock doors with them in the evenings, you teach them estimates three months later, they grow up like, this isn't for me. My girlfriend doesn't want me to work even the Saturdays. Or I'm going to work at John's company. Now you got to train another guy, another, another guy, another guy, another guy, bell-shaped curve. Virtual training solves some of that because you can hit a button now and train Johnny. Johnny leaves. Now you can train Sam. And, it's, you know, you still need the leadership and field training, but maybe 80% less than the old school days. It's an amazing thing. And, you know, whenever I first did it, it was a rough version, but it, I was pretty much the first platform that kind of mirrored the way Grant was training car salespeople. What I liked about your version was you organized it a little bit better. I was still running a roofing company. I was focused on sales and marketing. You focused on the scaling a little bit more. Do you remember kind of the early days? But I mean, both of our systems have evolved. You know, in all, in all honesty, your platform is known to be a sales platform, which is good. Mm -hmm. A lot of sales stuff in there. I think mine dumps in a little more in a on the sales stuff, but also on the key functional areas, like how do I hire and train a sales processor? How do I hire and train a QC inspector? How do I hire and train a production manager? Now, none of that's fun to watch necessarily unless you're in that right. position. But without those key positions supporting a robust sales team, you know what happens. Sell, build, collect, we fall apart. Well, look, and this is a, the power of the marketplace. You know, every time that you start doing innovations, I start looking at how I can improve my platform. We make the industry better trying to, uh, you know, always level each other up. You know, I might get under the skin here. hope not. I'm not going to bother you with this question. But, you know, there was this huge announcement. Uh, and, you know, I want to say congratulations. I heard your vision to roll up companies. Um, there's sort of a trend of private equity, venture capitalists and Wall Street money interested in roofers now. What do, you, what do you think about this trend? Why do you think this is happening? Yeah, especially this last year. So, like, one thing you can notice at the Winter Storm Conference this year, that we have PE groups. In fact, one of them are doing a breakout session. are coming in. We have a, a big merger and acquisition firm. We have a publicly traded company, Cirque. I can say it now because they actually announced it. You know, I thought it was an NDA when I was supposed to say anything. But they did make it public information that, like, you know, we're in an LOI right now, binding LOI until, I believe, uh, February 28th and going through due diligence as a possible merger. There's a lot. I mean, Sam Struthers, uh, Apple Roofing and uh, Crest uh, are going through, are, are uh, combining or, or excuse me, uh, merging together. And they're looking for more folks to join their organization. Garen Armstrong is being looked at. Uh, a lot of these guys are being looked at. So this. Well, you look at the NASA restoration. Because there's so many eyeballs on who are the players? What's going on? Why are solar and storm coming together? And then there's different PE groups just looking at the storm restoration contractors. So it's an exciting time in the $100 billion roofing storm restoration industry. Man, well, congratulations for, uh, you know, being able to exit your company, man. That's, that's well, it, hasn't, guys, it hasn't happened yet. So it's a little if you read the headline, it's a little it's a little you got to read the whole story. So it's an we're in an LOI, which means we're going through due diligence. Um, it could very well happen and we, and we look forward to it if it does, but there's still a lot of things that have to happen before, you know, it actually look, happens. It, look as, as trendsetters in an industry. Okay. Um, you know, you do have, when you create new lanes for yourself, the opportunities others don't. And so, you know, you, you set in a trend that the, that building a platform, building an event, helping in a community and also the reoccurring revenue that comes from it is something that all, a lot of people are going to be interested in. And so it kind of sets the value for my organization as, you know, something that now it's like we're on the same block and you sold your house and now my real estate's worth more. So thank you, man. Good job. Can I get a big? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, got you, dog. I sent you 50,000. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's so, a good okay. That's a good start. All right. So let's talk about that. The national roofing league. All right. Um, let's, I want to get into some hard questions. Okay. Cause that was a hard question. Um, Let's see. Is the storm business dying? Well, no. Storms are, themselves are growing exponentially. We, we do. I do a little statistical study every year. I'm not saying the icebergs are melting. I'm not rooting for uh, what's his face. Uh, Biden. 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 Don't West tell me you're rooting for Fauci. However, <laughs> hail storms are, except for last year, hail, overall in the last 10 years, hail storms are increasing. Hurricanes are increasing. Flood and fire is increasing. That's just uh, that's a real fact. So that's an exciting time to be in this street. 
Insurance companies are getting smarter. Defer, diffuse, defeat, slow pay, no pay, underpay. That's increasing. But at the end of the day, from an aggregate level, they paid out $136 billion, billion in, in property casualty claims last year. That's a lot of money. Did they pinch pennies along the way? Probably, and they play a lot of games, but they still paid it. So somebody on its receiving end is getting that money. A lot of it happens to be GCs, roofers, and storm restoration contractors rebuilding homes and communities. That's my purpose, baby. Be the giant. But it's getting harder. Yes, it's getting harder because there's a lot of third party players with their fingers in the mix. You got engineers, third party engineers on both sides. You got public adjusters. You got policyholder attorneys. You got third party TPA firms Listen, on the insurance claim side. All, I mean, all those people. You got other people. savage roofers. You got the people in the office. <laughs> it's the savage roofers. Yep. Savage roofers. I mean, smart guys like Sim. And, you know, he came to my conference. And next thing I know, two of my people are getting recognized as his best general manager and salesperson. But, you know, all's fair in love and war. And when that, you know, that? Savage. Savage. Oh, okay. Well, it's yeah. not Savage. Savage, it's, it's Sam with Crest. Oh, he, Sam. He, he, we lost a GM and a sales guy, and they, they did good over them. Shout out to those guys. I, I wish them the best. You know, you always want to advance people's career. You want to help them if their road or roadmap is to go to own their own company. Great. If their roadmap is to uh, join another company in another storm. Great. You want to you want to be able to have a system that people can walk in and but also walk out of. And it's not like you have to be, you know, aligned to me forever. Because People are going to have multiple companies that they work with. We're in sort of a free agent world. Don't, do you think things have changed? We're in a different kind of world than we used to be in. Well, let's see. 1999, the stuff still went on. I mean, it was still cutthroat back then. It goes on more now, uh, Lee, because of social media, and we're more aware, and it's more magnified on social media. Everything we do is magnified, as you know. Thank you, Dmitry Lipinski. <laughs> Just kidding. That's a joke. But everything's magnified to a certain extent, and sometimes magnified 100 times greater than it really is. And that's social media 101. So cutthroat things like that get out, just like people are hearing about it now. Back then, you might not have heard about it. Uh, humans migrate, employees migrate. I always tell my employees that come in, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Just leave in the right manner. Turn your computer in. Don't steal my stuff. Back in the day, it was don't go down the street and knock the neighbor's door. The one you stop by with me, go a couple blocks over. You know, it's hard to control that with independent contracts, but there's an ethical line you cross when you move to a different company. It's going to happen. Close your stuff out the right way or collect all your jobs before you go. That's what you should do. So you get paid because if you leave midstream, you ain't going to get paid. And, uh, you know, some guys follow that method. Some guys just just uh, tail end it out to another company, leave a lot of chips hanging, and they go back and actually ask for, to be paid under stuff three months later while they're working for a competition. That's where things get squirrely. Hey, man, it's uh, my uncle told me there's three things you got to do. If you want to grow your roofing company, you need more salespeople. Number two, if you need to, like, Give people a place to grow or they will go. You got to turn those people into good leaders. Number three, you got to get rid of the bad people, the bad culture, the bad cancer. And sometimes that's the hardest thing. Now, uh, I got a question for you. Um, what do you think about, you know, uh, your secret sauce? Like you scale a company to eight figures. You're, you've taken a lot of people. You've helped them. Um, what What do you think? How, how do you think when you're coaching somebody, you get them to that? You know, if they're going from one to three million to eight figures, what? how do you take them there? It has everything to do with, I believe, I believe personally, it has everything to do with hiring and training. So who you hire initially matters. Obviously, you can't hire slee stacks. You can turn a B player into an A player. Uh, what's a slee stack? Slee stack. Okay. This year, you're a little too young for this, man. But back in the early <laughs> 80s, back in the early 80s, you had the land of the lost. It's the old school guy. Nice. Your, dad, your dad remember this. Nice. You know, and you got the slee stacks were in the caves. They hissed, they hissed and talked to you. We're going to get pictures of the slee stacks on the YouTube. They were scary at night in the cave, but as soon as they stepped out in the sunlight there, you know, they withered away. So they would call them slee stacks. Nice. Sometimes we hire slee stacks. You know, they kind of hover in your office. They don't do much. They hiss and gossip and they cause problems. And so, we, you know, we just make them slee, slee stacks. There's, a, there's slee stacks in the industry gossiping about other people. I think yeah, you always, always say you get the system. Today. Don't you agree that, it, 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 that if you have new people and you have systems coming in, that it's easier to get rid of the bad people and just move on to the people that align with your culture? If the leader's willing to hold them accountable, yes. But, you know, it's you know it's the old beer buddy thing. I used to be the biggest problem in my own company back in the day. Oh, you're, you've had a problem being the beer buddy? Being the beer buddy, oh, yeah. Me too. I, I like to be the smoke buddy, the, the safety meeting buddy. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, you yeah. go out, think about you're storm chasing with these guys. You know, we're in our yeah. uh, late 20s, early 30s. We're living in storm storm. Storm. We're sleeping on air mattresses together, owners, managers, and salespeople. I mean, the military. 
I don't know how y'all do it, but I, I'm family. not sleeping in the air mattress with other men. No, I'm just kidding. Every once in a while, actually, during the fucking well, next to them, you know, they're three feet. Yeah, away. we uh, put twenty guys in a house. Well, I'm saying back then, you know, you're you're three to six months away from your family. You're lonely, so you these people become your family. They're not your employees, really. From you know, mentally, you go through a thing. You end up going, to, you know, going out and have some drinks. You're eating dinner with them every day. It's it's hard. You cross a blurry line there between. Uh, owner, entrepreneur, leader, and employee and manager. And it's just the way it is. It starts to become like friends and family. That's a good thing for a while until later on when you have to hold those same people accountable, it becomes a problem or it can become a problem because you become emotionally connected to your people. Man, I saw a UFC fighter talking about how somebody got knocked out. It's like some people ain't built for this shit. So like in the storm business, you know, it can be too much for somebody, all the stress, all the freedom. I remember one guy, he got away from his wife and he was selling all these deals and he, wrecked his car, got all kinds of issues, big problems. The point was, you know, how do you, th- how do you recommend keeping the balance, having a good culture and uh, also, you know, keeping these guys from like ruining their lives? Well, you, you can't, you, you, there was two, two different questions. Are very good. So one, how do you keep the balance? One is, as an owner entrepreneur, even a key manager, really an owner entrepreneur, you got to figure out how to keep a wall between you and everybody. Meaning you got to have some key managers that help protect you. So you're not always dealing with the drama, daily drama. Where's my business carriage? What's my draw? My girlfriend left me. I beat up my girlfriend last night. I mean, all that stuff's going to go on, right? Especially in our industry. Okay. How do you, how do you keep distance from some of that? You're not going to keep distance from all of it. Well, a good sales manager, a good sales coordinator, recruiter, a production manager on jobs, dealing with customers, you got to distance yourself a little bit from your people just like a coach would not become best friends in an FL team with each player, because at the end of the day, the coach, the head coach, like Jimmy Johnson has to make decisions that are against his mantra, like trading Herschel Walker to Minnesota in 1989 or 1990 was an emotional decision. They didn't want to do it, but he knew he'd get a better team if he did it because the Cowboys sucked in 1989. They were one in 15 and he traded Herschel to Minnesota. Everybody thought he was nuts, but he got nine players. One of them ended up becoming Emmett Smith on draft picks yeah. And the team won three Super Bowls in a row, two in a row. Then, then I won uh, three years later, or one year after that, they skipped one. But that comeback story is incredible only because he is willing to give up his top guy. And as owners and entrepreneurs, sometimes, and I went through the same thing this year. I lost three top producers that I gave chance and chance again not to make mistakes. I didn't want to lose them because I cost me $3 million in sales this year. I'm not going to name them. They know who they are. But chance upon chance, and, and the entitlement was in, I knew for me to get my other team members here to start selling and growing, I had to get rid of this the bad apples. And they're not bad apples, they're good people, but they got so entitled, and they're coming in late, not coming to meetings, doing this. The same thing we deal with the 1099 sometimes, their best producers, they were inhibiting the culture of my other team to grow. I hated losing them, but I had to do it to grow. And so I, I think every leader and owner entrepreneur goes through this, and I think that wall helps us make better decisions like that the ones we don't want to have to make to be able to build a better team. Hell yeah, man. And, um, you know, building a team is really tricky because a lot of times people don't want to work. Sometimes you get on it. When we first started doing job boards and Craigslist, people would come and you get really qualified people. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass. What do you think? There's, you think there's a stigma working with the trade? Do you think there's a stigma with work? What do you think? It's a problem with a woke, woke entitled culture. What do you think it is? It's a couple of things. Traditionally, you know, in the eighties, early nineties, we grew up, Hey, be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, to be successful, okay? Go to college, be successful. Nobody said, hey, go be a contractor. You can make a lot of money. Truth is, a lot of storm restoration contractors on the sales side make more than most medical services, the top ones anyways. Nobody teaches anybody that in school, especially on the trades level. Even guys working with their hands make good money, a lot of times more than what they're making in corporate America. That's not being taught in the schools. That's been going on for the last 20 years. Blue collar is not sexy. Roofing's not sexy. There's a comeback, I believe, because of the storm restoration industry, but overall, it's still not sexy. Then you got COVID. Everybody's in lockdown, away from everybody. People are coming back now trying to show up. You know, If you're lucky to get a warm body to show up to your interview that doesn't have missing teeth and drooling problems because nobody else shows up, they're sitting at home either collecting money or they learned how to operate from home and make money and they don't want to go back and work for the man. It's so not it's a tough. joke. It's tough. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that kind of – I want to talk about I got a little bit of challenge. Uh, we, we're into recruiting challenges. I know you've always been a master recruiter. It's part of why you are successful um, scaling your company and you built great teams. But, uh, you know, the reality is you built a great solar team. And we were just kind of breaking into the solar business the last two years. 
Um, the National Roofing League is exactly what you were talking about. We we want to raise people's character, confidence, financial independence, getting people into the modern day gold rush of solar and insurance roofing. And uh, the best training could include SVG. It could include Scott Diamonds. More importantly, you know, for me, you're a master at driving sales through recognition. So recognition drives sales more than anything else. How did you? Money. Well, How did you use recognition to drive sales when you were in the roofing business? Well, we did a lot of interesting things back in the day. Uh, we did, you know, we did the Rolex contest, although I will say this, I call it the Rolex curse now because everybody ever bought a Rolex for back in the day, within one year, they went and tried to start their own business. So I wouldn't <laughs> recommend Rolex anymore. Just kidding. We call it the Rolex curse, but we did it, you know, and we did, we did very elaborate trips and we did camaraderie dinner meetings, the 100K club. And we did trips to Vegas. We did all this. It was about camaraderie uh, with these guys. And, and they, yes, they made a lot of money, but they wanted to be part of that team. And so part of that is having, you got to have some horses on your team for others to follow and a strong leader to breathe that, that, that motivation and culture on a daily basis of people. And then of course, training without training, none of that motivation works. It's like Tony Robbins. You go to Tony Robbins concert. Yeah. You get all pumped up and excited, emotional, feel good. You all, you still can't rub two sticks together a week later to run a business. You know what I mean? It's that, brings it, that brings you to Tony Robbins issues. Tony Robbins says, hold on. Tony Robbins says, sometimes you can have all the smarts in the world. It's not about how you do it. It's got things inside of you blocking you, whether it's mental illness, anxiety, fear, whether it's trauma, recreating the same situations. I see so many guys come into coaching. They don't apply themselves. They let fear control them. Mental illness is an issue, both when people have success. I've seen people die from drug overdose. I've seen, from, I've seen three of my students uh, in the last – two years, uh, unfortunately pass away. And so, you know, I feel like there's almost this like mental, uh, the, we have a higher likelihood of being mentally unstable and, and, and I don't know, I sort of have a calling to help people. I mean, what do you, do you see that as a problem in our industry? Well, I think nation, nationwide post COVID, a whole lot of slee sticks, a slee stack mentality came out of COVID. I think a lot of mental illness came out of COVID lockdowns. I think, that's an overall problem everywhere. I think our industry, because it's an easy industry to get into, there's not background checks. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, get out of prison one day, go get a job as a salesman, all of a sudden making a couple hundred thousand a year and make good or bad decisions to change your life. Happens every day. So we tend to attract people because we have a lower bar of entry to our entry where we attract people that might have some of these issues. Um, but that, that's the trades industry overall. I think the storm industry attracts people that like money. So it's, it's might be a little, uh, little more exponential on our side but i think i think that's a problem nationwide probably even globally right now with uh mental illness coming out of this whole covid mess uh people going back some of us some of us give a hard time about it and some of us make jokes you've seen uh we'll, we'll get to dimitri but you see my what my man joshy the blow man's been putting out oh my god that guy's he's crazy is who's he crazy who's, who's joshy Joshy the blow man, Joshua Biggers, best damn roofer. He's got a parody. He came out with the crack smoking snowman. I was like, are you kidding me? That's not good that for years. Yeah. Well, that's not good for roofer shit. Yeah. The most of that's for entertainment though. Yeah, it is. I know Josh is out there really trying to just get everybody's attention about having fun. Oh, at yeah. work. And that's what it's about. Having fun at work. We, uh, Raising the status of blue collars, getting people known and having being proud of being roofing contractors. And so but I think I think you're onto something with that that league, because if there was more awareness nationwide, statewide, whatever, not just about trades, trades and working with your hands, there needs more awareness of that as well. But this storm restoration sales opportunity or you know, the opportunity to do what we do in, on a sales side in our industry at all, there's a huge opportunity there. And some of the guys that come from all different walks of life, realtors old stockbrokers back in the day, the old mortgage guys, the, the alarm guys, when they come into our industry, they're fascinated about, about the sales model. As I was, when I left a corporate job, I thought this industry is incredible. I, back then I was like, Hey, the sales is too easy. Cause I used to sign the shit out of all those deals. But later on, I realized somebody has got to build them. So as an owner, <laughs> it wasn't the same as sale. Yeah. Build them, collect them, deal with the carriers and the supplements. And that's where the training really comes in as part of the aspect, you know, but there, there, there is a need for a mouthpiece over there. And I think if, if some kind of organization network got together, well, the big idea is that we're we have, of sales. We got, we got a virtual business suite for them. We got the best training for them. We got a, a weekly mastermind for, for our uh, Scott Diamonds guys, SVG guys, whoever wants to jump in and participate to be recognized in leaders, founders, uh, company owners, managers. Um, the idea is that we're going to give away prizes. There's going to be swag involved. We just gave away $10,000 to Scott Edwards. 
Um, but, you know, I'm excited to come to the Win the Storm Conference as the National Roofing League. Scott's going to be there. We're going to be having games. We're going to be giving away money and prizes. I think uh, we set up a little stage, a podcast booth, and a bar there. So we'll be having lots of fun. And uh, me and you, we're going to have a little uh, a little uh, systems debate. We're going to talk about you know case studies, uh, different people, and how we've helped them grow, and and how our our systems kind of are different. I don't want to give away too much of what we're talking about, but we're going to go over recruiting, marketing, closing, and uh, you know the idea is that. By featuring both of our differences, you might find there's more alignment than you think. And mm-hmm. uh, taking taking the best of both worlds um, is sort of a great thing. So um, we're so, really moving. Uh, you know, I'm glad you're moving in that direction because you know instead of looking at this competition, collaboration is always better in my mind. One plus one equals ninety nine at two. But we're going to really move in a solar direction in 2022, not just because of the potential acquisition. But even if that doesn't happen either way, because what I feel like is the storm, you know, we've really developed the storm side on training. There's always more. But the solar really blends in from the financing of the jobs to helping out with the deductible to really add a value added. You're gonna, we're going to really steer SVGU, not, not just storm into the solar. Let's dive into that. Let's get fucking deep into that, OK? Because really, we can spend, let's spend 20 fucking minutes talking about solar real quick, OK? <laughs> because really, you led right into where I want to go, baby. This is what I want to do, OK? SVG versus SDU solar sales contest. Yeah. We drive sales. We fucking celebrate we still it's be a little difficult for you to beat our our network because we have i know you got a little head start but see i always like to be the head 50 start. million in solar in the last three months so it's gonna be a little hey, tough. You, hey, tell me your numbers where you at excuse me we have how much we've got over 50 million dollars in the last eight months in residential and commercial 50 million in solar loan and that's solar loan and roof it's not roof but solar loan revenue that actually helps the roof and the solar projects um, and that's between 283 dealers that we've signed up. But hope, most of those dealers haven't even got started yet. We're still we're still getting them through that first solar job, meaning that's going to grow exponentially. Did you that roofer math? I heard it was 250 jobs. Excuse me? I'm just fucking with you, bro. <laughs> no, but that's the tip of the iceberg, what's about to happen in 2022 here. Because okay, a lot so of- you're ahead of the game. So I, my goal is to do $50 million in this year for solar, okay? Because – Last year, to be honest with you, we only did about $5 million in solar from our organization, okay? But you're B2C. You're the consumer. You're selling solar to consumers, correct? No, man. We got roofing companies that are getting set up, and and, and that's what I'm yeah, saying. You are B2B. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have a – This guy's going to be a direct competitor. Why are we talking? <laughs> hey, this is going to be fun, dude. What are you talking about? We're here in the live. We're here in the live. Live. Didn't even know I was installing solar through roofing companies. Yep. I think, uh, I think it's great. I think the more people, the more contractors learn about how to use, it's not about the solar panels and, and saving the icebergs. It's about the ability to use financing at the push of the button at 0.99% over 25 years as an add-on for your deductible, your roof upgrade, what else, to make that job the most profitable job that that sales can, salesman can. And I, right now, we just started seeing the checks that we're sending out to these uh, solar dealers. They're making as much, if not more, on the solar commission than they are on the roof, which is incredible. No, I'm, I'm a business owner. And so after paying the sales leaders, the solar trainers, without any overhead investment, I'm making anywhere from, I don't know, 25 cents to 50 cents a watt on a job. And so what that means is, is basically about 15 to 20% of revenue, 21% of revenue actually on 5 million bucks. And so to me, as a roofing company that keeps scaling and adding expense, sometimes there's times where we're actually that margin is higher than the roofing company margin with less overhead liability. Less so liability. I want I want to I want to unpack that a little bit because you know I think uh, we need to dive into that a little deeper. You have a lot of companies that are having a hard time getting started. I had a hard time getting started, buying in, thought it was difficult, got real hung up on the idea that you're getting somebody to take a fifty to seventy thousand dollar loan. You know, so tell me about biggest hiccups getting uh, people started with solar. Uh, some lessons that you've learned. Fraud, why don't you jump in real quick? I'll tell you real quick from a storm side. I'm going to let Fraud real talk real quick because he's the president of the solar division. He's, and he's he, they're knee deep on his Zoom calls with these guys every day. Um, what I think is just a, it's a mental thing for most. They think solar means the icebergs are melting. It's a left or right thing. So you got to get over that political thing, number one. Number two, how do I train my sales guy? That's what they, how do I train my sales guy how to crunch through solo and add this solar loan on top of the roof? So it sounds complicated. But the truth is, with the solo inter- with the solo sales presentation program and some Zoom call training support, which is what we provide, we have five people do a full time twenty four seven. 
those things slide through like, uh, you know, like pancakes. But the first five jobs, someone's got to be there helping you on a Zoom call. And that's what these guys do every day. Fraud, maybe you can just Come on, get on here. I'm challenging you, bro. You're killing me out there. And I'm, I'm challenging you to a duel. What's up? Bring it on, my man. Bring it on. <laughs> nice to meet you. I see you doing big things in the roofing business, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've personally been doing solar for over 10 years. Uh, it's my first two years in the roofing industry. So I've learned a lot on the roofing side. But to incorporate these and to marriage these two industries together has just been a phenomenal um, outcome. You know, um, our training platform has just uh, received a full facelift. So, you well, know, the first we year, pitch, I want to bust the questions down and get value. Yeah, yeah. So, here we go. You're going to get plenty of time to plug. We're going to we're going to answer. We're going to answer the questions for the viewers. They're fucking hung up. They, they have a hard time getting started off square one. Get them off the square one. How the fuck do we get started? The way you get started is understanding the process, right? That's the hardest thing. These contractors are so used to having full control over every part of their jobs that to bring in solar and having an outside third-party contractor doing the installation, the permitting, that's the biggest hang-up. These guys want to get paid. They want to know what's going on, right? And it's just full transparency. So not only do we give them the full back-end access to every installer we work with, but it's just getting them familiar with the timelines. In some areas, we see installs going in in three weeks. In some, we're at 180 days that we sold that contract and the permitting and the counties and the AHJs are just kicking our asses, right? And they know it's not something that's in our control. And that's, I think, the biggest hurdle right now in the industry is just getting them to understand the process of how solar actually works, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, for me, it's you know, just- Can I add something to that too? I think a big part of it, too, was the fact that we nurtured it. We threw those boot camps. We surrounded them with a bunch of other CEOs. And when you put all those CEOs together, all those owners, with the energy of the boot camp, it lit it up. It lit it on fire. So, yeah. And then we also put that all over our social media. So other owners saw that as well. And then it just took off on a rocket ship. Man. All right. So yeah. here's the We both got a sales organization. We both put in solar on two years ago. I brought in Taylor McCarthy, brought him in to kind of bring that sort of Vivint door to door style. He, yeah. you, know, you know, Taylor, right? Yeah, I actually worked at Vivint myself. Right. So, 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 you know, Taylor came to me. He's like, man, I want to build a consulting company. I, I, I wish I could do what you do, but I'll help you learn solar and do door to door for a year. And so he did that with me. And, uh, you know, he really gave me a lot of uh, insight on, on, on solar door to door. And I, and I realized, it's a lot easier to go knock doors and offer somebody to do uh, a roof inspection that could be paid for by the insurance company and then do solar. Do you agree? I almost uh, disagree with you on that because okay. I feel like it's a lot easier. I mean, cause I come from the solar world, right? Where okay. I'm I like good at pitching on, on, on solar, right? I pitch on more than just slapping. Glass. To knock, you think it's easier to knock doors and, and sell solar in the neighborhood versus selling knock doors and selling insurance. I mean, I personally never knocked for insurance, but I've knocked solar and I know it's the easiest thing that I've ever done. You know, right. and I've sold a lot of stuff and uh, solar sells itself if you are educated and you present it right. Well, I, we've done both here in Florida and we knock on old roofs. We can sell them a roof, but if it's already got a new roof, we don't have the option to sell them a roof. So not not being able to sell an old roof solar means you have to walk past a home, which is bullshit. Right. And it's wasting opportunity. So the reality is you got to have both. But. You know, it's if you walk around knocking and you offer someone a fifty or seventy thousand dollar out of pocket expense deal, it is a little harder than doing that free roof inspection. And so, um, you know, and that's why you're bringing solar to sell that old roof, right? I think it's fucking great. Look, look, it hasn't been replaced yet. Well, let me I'll, show you why. Let me show you how I can replace that roof with no money out of your pocket, right? That is absolutely right. And so, I mean, the, the idea is is that with the incredible interest rates of uh, of a long term loan of them being able to roll in the deal. Like I, I was in my Muay Thai class the other day and my coach, he's a hundred kickboxing fights. He's a crazy legend. He's about, he's an earth guy, but he wanted to make extra money. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, start making a list, dude, we'll get you set up. And, uh, basically, you know, as soon as he looked down and pointed at this person that was a good candidate, we started talking and immediately got a copy of the power bill. She said it would be, you know, something she was already thinking about, but, my whole point is, is that uh, you can hire people to sell solar. Sometimes that guy, he might sell roofs, but he was kind of more into the idea of being able to sell everybody solar. 
Right. You know, I don't you think it's easier to recruit sales guys when you when you when you offer when you offer solar versus just offering roofing. Hundred percent, because now you're you're creating a hybrid sales rep where they can go to a door, they can knock for roof, they can knock for solar. There's no storm that's needed anymore, right? You can sell year round with solar. Where in certain markets with roofing, you're only you know you're 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 shutting yourself down a few months out of the year because it's just not in season anymore. Where 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 solar, it's a it's a three sixty five day business, right? You can sell solar year round. Okay, so here here's what people love to see on my show. We've been going back yeah. and forth. People just love to see the solar pitch, bro. I got I, I had one of these went viral on Instagram, two hundred and twelve thousand views, yeah. and uh, it's it's because everyone likes to comment on the solar pitch. People say it's a scam. People the comments that 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 said scam only fed the algorithm on the Instagram reel more, and it, it went through the roof. But uh, I, I want to hear your solar pitch. Is that cool? Can we do that? Yeah, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you own your house or do you rent it? Uh, I'm a homeowner, my man. And why did you want to own it? Uh, because uh, it's a good investment. It's a good investment. So right now with your electric company, did you did you choose that electric company or did they choose you? No, I did, obviously didn't have a choice. Didn't have a choice. And that's the only thing in America you really don't get a choice on is your electric company, right? You choose yeah. everything else, where you get your mortgage, where you get your milk, your groceries. That's the one thing as an American that you don't get an option on is where you get your electricity from. Now, in Texas, you got 13 different options in certain areas. But for the most part, you're only stuck with one option, right? Yeah, is this about now, solar? This is, this is my solar pitch. Man, I tell you what. I, I tell I'm already into my solar pitch. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I, I, I'm the homeowner. Yeah, man, I'm I'm cool. I've heard about this solar. I, I I don't have it in my budget. Gotcha, man. Well, let me tell you about this awesome program because solar's changed so much over the last few years, right? Yes, before 20, 30, 60 thousand dollars out of pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Horrible transfers, horrible warranties, no roof penetration warranties, right? Mm -hmm. Where now you're teaming up with the best in the business, where we offer full 25 year warranty, not only on the roof but the workmanship, the penetrations, the equipment. Right. How much is your electric bill right now? About two fifty. About two fifty. And do you have solar on your own house? Uh, no. Well, then you shouldn't be selling solar. No, no, no. We, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm in character. I'm in character. I know. I know. Uh, so, <laughs> but so what, what I do is, you know, okay, you're paying two hundred and fifty dollars a month, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what are you getting in return from that two hundred and fifty dollars a month? Um, I'm getting power. You're getting power. Now, do you have do you have the control over that power? Like, can you set your own price or is, does it get set by the utility? No, I don't have any control. Exactly. Right. So I want to show you with solar how we knock down that two hundred and fifty dollar a month bill down to, let's say, one seventy, maybe even two hundred, maybe even two hundred and fifty. Right. I'm going to give you a straight bill swap. But I'm going to show you how that two fifty now, instead of paying like rent and it just gets thrown away. And the only thing you receive back from the utility is higher rates year after year with no control. I'm going to show you how you can take your own utility and take control over it, where now you know exactly what your payment is each month. Right? Well, I don't know if I'm going to sell my home. I don't. I don't know if I'm going to be here. Yeah, you know, average American only stays in their home five to eight years, right, before they move out. Right. That's why not only for you is it a benefit because the first five years you're going to take advantage of this federal tax credit if you have the tax liability for it. Right. But you're locking yourself in at a guaranteed rate now for the next five years to where if you move out in five years and the new homeowner that's coming in, if they're really doing their due diligence and looking at your house and the house next door that doesn't have solar, they see your house is locked in at $250 a month, where in five years, your neighbor's looking at $320 to $350 a month. And the transfers and the warranties all transfer. It's going to be a no brainer for that new homeowner to come in and pick up right where you left off. Okay. All right. Well, you seem like a nice enough guy. Here's my power bill. And uh, I'm not yeah. selling you. I'm not telling you yes, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, so what I'm going to do, I, I need this power bill, but I also need the last 12 months because whatever, when, whenever I come back and set this appointment with you, I want to make sure I give you some accurate and concrete information. So I'll just need you to go onto your utility website, pull the last 12 months of your actual usage and the last 12 months of what you actually paid out to the utility company Send those over to me. I want to put a special proposal together for you. And then once we connect back later, 
whether it's tomorrow or the next day, I want to break down how, how much this is going to benefit you in the future. Right. There you go. Let's just, let's just sit there. Oh, wait, there's more. But oh, wait, there's more. You got to close the deal. Listen, I, I think what really roofers need to, if you're watching this, you overcomplicate the process. The way you yeah. get started is you execute that pitch. And really, you can call people you've already put roofs on. And the beautiful thing about that is here in Florida, they get the full government tax incentive up to a year on the roof if we put exactly. solar it's a beautiful thing. And that's just one of my pitches, right? I have I have a thousand pitches to where if I'm if I'm a roofing contractor, right, and I have a database full of 3000 old customers over the last few years, right? I have a pitch for to to go back and do a quality inspection call, right? Cuz what better face to sell them solar than the roofing company that did their roof for them, right? Amen. Amen. Not and see the thing is is guys, this is where the, kind of uh, the next step goes. You know, for me, I've got this one brand new recruit. He prefers solar in Fort Lauderdale because it's uh, there's not a lot of storm damage that the claim process takes forever. Right. But we've got guys creating video ads and it's our automation system and our inside sales team and our Zoom calendar from Facebook ad to appointment that I'm most excited about because I'm looking at the Facebook ads and the campaigns. The solar leads come in cheaper than the roofing leads. They lead to more roofing deals on 40% of the time. The average transaction value is $57,000 a job. And so I've got these guys that actually have more freedom as business salespeople because they can schedule their appointments with, uh, with leads. I mean, and so, you know, most roofers are hitting the roof up first and they're, 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 they're getting scheduled appointments separate from solar. But, you know, these guys, um, once, once they get going, have you had anybody really get started on the internet with some, some good advertising? Has anyone really transitioned that? You know, we have, we have quite a few companies that are actually getting solid installs going in quite consistently now. And they're starting to start advertising that more and more on their social media platforms. Just now that they know the process. The See, first- now- Three, Farhad, you gotta read my fucking book, bro. I'm I'm the I am that that guy. I teach yeah. people how to make video ads that sell like clockwork, and uh, you can learn a lot. I mean, just like I I can learn a lot from you. You're a fucking solar beast. Uh, the reality is is that uh, I I I challenge a beast every day because I like to have uh, good challenges. And yeah. uh, what, what we're what we're doing with the National Roofing League is we're gonna give away prizes and stuff. I think uh, I'm gonna invite Anthony to my conference in May. Jocko Willink's going to be there. Uh, Ed Milet's going to be there. Dustin Poirier is going to be there. Uh, you're you're obviously invited as well because I think we should have a solar sales contest uh, 100%. between Win the Storm and the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. And then, um, you know, we can recognize winners from both groups. And it's not really going to be about us as much as it is about our our. Our people, the people in our, our organizations that are kicking in. Right. And obviously, y'all have a lot more companies onboarded. But uh, we have about 10 companies onboarded across the United States. We're, we've are we been rocking and rolling for about six months. Um, mostly, I have about three three different companies that I'm working with. But, but I just recently made a complete switch to go all with one company that's located in a lot of the same states. So sure. the, re- the reality is, is that... Um, it's going to be fun. We're going to let lift each other up. What do you think about that that challenge? I'm I'm all about challenges, man. I'm all about competition. I'm all about synergizing. Absolutely. So so talk about some of the largest door to door organizations you've worked with. Vivid. What you learned from Vivid. How how that you apply that to your daily life. Yeah. So I, I started off in at, at a Solar City. Right. I was actually an installer. I used to install these up on the rooftops. I did that for about a year, and then I got down into the electrical side, and. Uh, then I used to see the the sales guys pulling up in their nice cars. I'm I'm early twenties. I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm making three four grand a month, and uh, you know these sales guys are pulling up in their nice cars. And I start talking with them, and and then I get I get to be really good friends with one, and uh, transferred right into the Solar City side of sales where we're selling leases only. Right, I'm only making 180 200 dollars a kilowatt back then, you know, and uh, Turns out I ended up being in the in the top percentage of the sales reps at Solar City in the Phoenix area. Um, and I and I carried records. I helped open up Albuquerque, New Mexico market. I helped open up uh, Prescott and Yuma. Um, so I've been a big part of the movement. You know, my friend, Michael O'Donnell. Name sounds really familiar. Yeah, he's he's a beast. He's uh, 
It's trending on my YouTube channel. How to earn seven figures as a sales rep, as a solar, as a solar guy. It's and solar man, you you can you can literally. There's no cap on what you can earn in this in this industry, but you just gotta you 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 get what you put into it, right? What so, I love is it's a transition to retail, and for an insurance guy like myself, yeah, I've been too dependent on storms. You know, what really saved me is figuring out how to be uh, a direct response marketer for recruits and leads on top of my door to door. But um, the solar for me has really represented uh, kind of a, a, a opportunity to double my entire business without adding overhead expense. Yeah. And to, to actually a lot of the leads I get with almost zero acquisition costs, it's a no brainer. And any roofer that's not doing solar, any solar guy that's not doing roofing, they're kind of insane. And that's why. You know, uh, I really think it's pretty cool that we're collaborating together. That we're going to talk about, you know, our systems and, yeah. and what we're going to what we're going to do. And more importantly, um, you know, I think getting more roofing contractors aware of, of of how they can build more stability. I know for me, I was traveling, I was taking my family from place to place, going to storms, and I had to learn how to be a storm catcher, not a storm chaser. Right. And so, I believe learning how to sell solar is a good way. I even partnered with Good Leap on some other loans because in Florida, we have a problem where the roofs are 50,000. We have a limit of 100,000 on, on a Good Leap loan. So we'll get a, a lot of times a new tile roof that needs to be done, but right. it's a $150,000 deal. And so we had to get you know a, a home improvement separate loan for the roof a lot of times. But we there's some loans they offer, same company, 3% for the, for yeah. the and some loans they offer no dealer fee. Yeah. It's like, these, these yeah, we are, actually we actually have the owner of Goodly coming. He's going to be at the show, and uh, we're going to do a whole segment on the home improvement loans, right? Because they are getting into that side. That way, we can get homeowners finance without solar, right? Or maybe they're or yeah. And this project this, and uh, breakout is going to be at when the storm. So make sure you know everyone that's viewing come to it because now we can get homeowners finance without solar, right? Low, really low dealer fees, low interest rates. And because I, before I would go offer financing and, and, and people would get cut down to 28%, 18%, you know, at the best 8%, 9%. And, right. you know, the reality is the loan terms weren't that long. So the payments were pretty high and yeah. it wasn't that great a deal. And insurance just came really prevalent. But, you know, this whole idea of these, these different kinds of loans, it opens whole different options. And my best clients are retail companies. And it's because we help with the digital marketing and the recruiting leads and salespeople. And I think that's one thing that uh, is really cool because, you know, that's, that's, that's something that really complements. And it's because I believe the future, what do you think about these organizations? Some of these solar companies are using all virtual sales teams. You know, one of my friend Randall, he closes for these guys. You know, I have a high ticket sales team just like you do, where we get leads and we close them from an inside sales to sell consulting. But we also have an inside sales team selling solar and roofing. Um, what do you think the future of having like home improvement services sold through Zoom without having to go to the home? Do you think there's a, bit, a trend or a precedent that's being set? I think absolutely. That's the way it's trending, especially with people in COVID right now. People don't want people in their homes, right? I literally just closed a, a Zoom call right before I walked into this meeting right here. Um, my guys were, were on Zoom calls all day long, literally um, all day long, right, with homeowners all across the nation. We're selling in 42 states right now. So learning new programs like SRAC on the East Coast and Chicago and T-REC and all those programs, right, learning and educating the homeowners um, it comes a lot off. Uh, I, I think it comes a lot easier virtually, right? Because a homeowner is is safe in their house, right? They they feel like they're still in control. But I also feel like in person is also very powerful, right? When you're in person, uh, I, I feel like nine times out of ten, I'll close a deal no matter what. Where virtually, it's more like eight out of ten, right? Uh, but people are shopping these days, right? They they want to get a few options, they want to get a few bids, um, and I think virtual for homeowners is a little safer for them. They feel more comfortable while making that decision on if I'm going to go with this company or that company, right? We've, we're selling roofs through Zoom. We're selling solar yeah. through Zoom, roof and solar through Zoom. And I believe that it's the future of who can get the most leads digitally and close them through a big warehouse of sales guys. You know, Absolutely. return, you know, if you buy a, le a, a solar deal for $600 off the internet or a roof off the internet for 600 bucks, you'll multiply it till your money yeah. doesn't stop. Oh, the ROI, yeah, is, is, is right away. You know, you, you get that investment back on your very first deal. But yeah, man, I mean, I, I've worked uh, after Solar City. I jumped over and was working internally operational for Vivint. Um, I worked for them uh, internally for two what'd years. What did you learn most for leadership from those guys? 
Um, it's all about culture, man. Uh, it's culture and leadership is, is is huge in the industry. Well, they're they're all they're all you know doing things all you know super non roofer like. It's a big difference over you know how do you. It's a complete different world, solar and roofing, right? Uh-huh. Um, but once Sunrun bought out Vivint, um, I kind of ventured off and uh, I helped my buddy start up a local solar company, uh, which is he's actually going to be at the show as well. They were uh, my first bosses from Solar City, started up their own company. Uh, called ko energy which are five star um i helped them grow that that company and um you know they're very successful now and then after that i came over and me and anthony started our partnership and i wanted to scale because the financing model changed and now i was going after roofs our homes that needed roofs right that was my niche i was specifically targeting roof our homeowners that needed roofs and uh once i got that niche down and i was working with local roofing companies to get the roofs done. And then I was slapping solar on it. I was like, I got to take this next level. And uh, the hammer actually put Anthony and I in contact with each other. Um, and once I sat down with Anthony, we went through it. It was just, it was like, wow, you know, like let's, let's take this to the next level. And uh, this, this last year has just been phenomenal. Um, we, we're, we're definitely going to forex that this year. Um, but you know, as, as we grow, there's there's growing pains, right? Like I said, we've had contractors that had really quick installs and some that, you know, have had some that... Well, we, we've had a couple of... Var- we had a variation. That's sort of why we haven't got up to a huge start with the big group. But uh, Windmar has done a good job installing here in Florida for us. And we've mixed in a few different people. Um, mm-hmm. Some of my buddies, like Bill Murphy from... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know Bill Murphy. Texas. Okay, we've been collaborating. we got about three different installers across about 30-something states. So... Here's the deal, guys. We uh, we are learning, and we we really respect what you bring to the table over there, Farhad. My dad Appreciate told me that. that you were really a great teacher and coach and consultant, so I know that y'all are going to do great things. And, uh, you know, it's nice to meet you, man. Nice to talk. I look forward nice to, to talking. You as well. okay, before you go, can I ask you a question, Lee? Yeah, so get, get the tiger back on here. I got some more questions for Anthony. Come here on. Here comes don't, Anthony. Nice don't, don't, I got energy for days, dog. Let's go. Let's keep this thing going, man. Let's. What's up, man? You got it. Your, your guy right there is a stud, dude. He's gonna he's gonna make you millions of bucks. You excited? That's how that's how we grow, man. I was telling you, you got to find the right partner. Sometimes you find them better than you are. You got to keep them. How do you keep people like that from leaving? <laughs> you, you make them partners. Oh, there you go. There you, you go. The best managers partners in some. Community. No, I love that. He was a partner. Yeah, he had more knowledge in solar than I did, but I could see the connection right away. Well, tell me about building to exit, and um, you know, like. Uh, any advice you have somebody building a company to, to and I know yeah. it's not. Scale it and sell it. So, you know, that we talk about, it goes back to hiring and training, but, you know, once you, once most people can't leave their company, I question whether I can leave my own right now for more than, you know, for more than 90 days. The, actually, most people can't leave their company more than 30 days. It's going to fall apart without the strong leader. Now, if you got your stuff going on, you got some good managers in place, like the hammer and stuff like that, maybe it's three to six months. But how you know if you're gonna if you're gonna scale your company to sell it, the new buyer has to know that if you're no longer in that position or buying something that continue to perpetuate revenue and profit, and ninety percent of the companies out there can't do that without the founder, which is why they're a small business. Um, in my situation, I'm not leaving a company uh, if, if this deal goes down with Serg. I would become a president of a division. My biggest problem is going to be ego taking the hat off. Got messy hair. And, and saying yes, sir, to a CEO because I'm, I haven't done that in twenty you know twenty years, and now I'm part of a bigger publicly traded company. So that's that's a separate issue. But you still need to have infrastructure underneath you to run a division properly, and they still want to know if you were gone because maybe they can keep you on for three years. Can this system run without you? So when we talk about exit strategy, whether you want to sell your company, merge, or just go sit on a freaking island for three months. At some point, it's nice to be able to leave your company for a month or two months or go on a trip and know that not everything's going to fall apart without you, whether it's for relaxation or quality of life or selling it. Your dream should be as an entrepreneur to one day sell or merge your company so that you can do something else, maybe read a book or spend more time with your family. That's what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. And, uh, you know, I know you said about some tough times with your ex-partner. The first exit wasn't this pretty, but it's it's personal development and growth. How does, how does it feel this time around versus that that time? Well, like I said, we had, we had a killer 12-year run um, back in the day. Unfortunately, you know, I think 2012, like I said, we were number 36 in the top 100. Those are real numbers, by the way. And then in 2013, that's what I'm saying. You could be riding a, you could be riding the waves high thinking everything's good, walking on water, and just things happen. Things always happen no matter how good you are. 
In that case, last year, we had a renegade CFO, made up some fake subcontractors, you know, riddled out about $800,000 million away from the company. And, and it wasn't in my side of the office, so I didn't see it right away, but it happened over a period of six months. And then him and I ended up arguing about that. And that was the, that was kind of the tip of the iceberg that broke the Achilles, you know, and we, you know, but we downs, you know, we, so we downsized. Let me, tell you, let me tell you about one of my rock bottom moments real quick. Cause that was, that was very vulnerable of you to share that. I had $700,000 in fines on Florida. You know how they are here. I had the PEO coverage. because <laughs> Well, I tried to get the right workman's comp three times. They denied me. We were running off least employees. I paid uh, hurricane Charlie. I paid a hundred thousand dollar audit for workers comp audit for not following, uh, it's almost impossible to follow the Florida workers comp. Well, we did. Yeah. Well, the idea is, is that, you know, we didn't have a blanket policy and that solves a lot of problems, but, but I, I can remember uh, Sam Struthers walking to my office after we've been shut down and it's like, Oh my God, Lee shut down. He's falling apart. Everybody likes to prey on guys like me and you's downfall. It's like, Oh, everything's falling apart. Lee's fucked up. He's ruined it all. Oh, you know, what do you, what do you think about this crabs in, in a bucket society we live in? Well, I think the industry has a has a history of negative gossip, you know, from the Dimitris and all this other stuff. Look, if somebody's got time to rip on somebody, I mean, having maybe a casual comment saying, "Hey, so and so," but to go online or to spread a major a gossip or rumor or take a small thing and make it seem like a mountain of of negativity, if you got time to do that, you ain't monetizing. Number one, you ain't not monetizing, and you cannot monetize on negative attention. Yeah, you get might some likes and clicks. You might get a little ad money from fucking uh, Google or YouTube. You ain't got to come. That ain't real money. You you and me know that ain't real money. You got to have real products and services eventually that that perpetuate themselves, real value to actually scale anything. And so when I think of people talking talking crap online, all that, either they got too much time in their hands or they ain't monetized, which means they're broke. Well. Here's the deal. I asked him hard questions about his scaling system, and I asked you the same questions. You say the same things I do: recruit, hire, train. But the execution is the hard part. You know, uh, you, you you know, we have a lot of we. There's a cycle of growth in roofing. You you growth growth creates new problems, and it's it's. What do you think about these guys that um, that that have success? And then their business breaks, and then they then they're just afraid to go big again. What what message do you have to those guys? Well, first of all, I think growth in any industry, any business, because now you could you could call my company today. I'm not a roofing company anymore. I'm more about digital marketing, film, online training. We have, we get a hodgepodge solar. I think growth is in any small business is hard to uh, to find the right manager, put them in place. It's like chess. You you know you pick one wrong manager, it could take a year to recover from that. And you find another one. And then eventually, after you play chess, you find this team. And it's a beautiful thing. It's happened a few times in my life. And things are going like this and everything's going great. And even that will have a dip eventually. And I think you have to survive the dips. And some people get wiped out emotionally, financially, and psychologically after a big dip. I almost did myself two or three times in the last 20 years where you almost can't eat for three days. You're so damn depressed about, oh, my God, I'm a loser. I, mean, I screwed up. Look, that's part of business. And you learn from that. And I'll say this, anybody who hasn't gone through an audit by the federal government, by workers' comp, by something, by a state federal regulatory, you know what? They ain't doing enough business. You do 10 million plus in a storm restoration industry, 20 million plus, you're going to have a lawsuit from somebody. It might be a frivolous one. You're going to have an ex-employee that leaves that disgruntles and talks crap about you. You're going to have a state regulatory like Minnesota DOI that comes down because your yard sign didn't have a license over here. And one, something, one per- that stuff's called business. It happens. And if you're not experiencing that, you might just not be that busy. And that's how people learn. It's how people learn, man. I've learned through taking my lumps. My dad's tried to tell me along the way, but he always kind of let me take my lumps. And, uh, you know, I think people don't realize how long you've been an entrepreneur, man. Well, if you count selling Kool-Aid on the corner, you know, seven <laughs> years old. But, you know, I was a, I was an employee. You know, post-college, I was trained. You know, you're trained in school and college. You'll be that marketing manager, that manager for a corporation. You're not trained to be an entrepreneur. So I did corporate America for three years, but I was starting small businesses through college to stay, you know, like ballet companies and stuff like that. So I've always been kind of been an entrepreneur, but full, full, bur- full, full kernel was probably three years after corporate America. When I entered the storm restoration industry, I never, ever since then, I've never went back to the world of employment. Um, but prior to that, I was a full-time uh, employee, you know, marketing manager at a, at a publicly traded company. So the cool thing about that though, Lee, is I, is I seen the inner workings and worked as a senior manager in, in a publicly traded company, 
And so to go from that to a small business entrepreneur in the roofing or storm restoration industry, you can start immediately, you start putting the building blocks together in your head about what, how you take this company I started in my basement to become X. How do I evolve out of that into this new thing that's going on to become X? And then how do I eventually exit? So, you know, it was a good experience being a, being a wage slave. Excuse me. I hope my employees yeah. don't hear that. Pe- pe- wage earner. Excuse hey, me. The biggest thing I got. To people. start there and then before I became an entrepreneur. It was a good experience. Well, the biggest thing people people don't understand, even Autumn was asking me, Lee, what do you do? Do you go on roofs? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? It's like, man, you know, after time, you build each department, you grow leaders. The more that you have leads, salesmen, success stories, uh, the right people, you put them in the right place. What happens is as your business gets bigger and systems get better, as your culture is good, as your life gets actually easier, as your company gets bigger and better. And this whole thing that Dimitri perpetuates of build a $5 million business, keep the same thing, keep your overhead low, pull all your money out. What do you think about that philosophy versus, uh, you know, what's your philosophy? Well, I mean, I wouldn't follow a philosophy guy that's only been in the industry for less than 10 years and probably as a company owner five. And never chased a storm. So in this it'd be hard. It'd be hard for me to follow somebody of any philosophy. But with that said, I, I believe everything comes back to hiring and training, getting the right people in place. You know, it's it's all a balancing act. It's all a chess game. And eventually, when you get the right team, things begin to happen. And, and the hardest part is getting those key players. You know, getting a key sales team is one thing. Then you got to build. You know, on a roofing side, then you need a strong production manager. They need a good AR manager. They need a good sales manager. Without those three pillars. You're never going to hang out of that sales team or skill because you're running a sell, build, collect problems. Look, I've had a hard time because, you know, I want to help these guys. I'm Captain Save a Roofer, like Captain Save a Ho. I want to make, I want to help them scale it like me. And- Captain Save a Slee Stack. Yes, uh, Slave a Slee Stack. But, you know, I believe that we have the best recruiting system, lead generation system, and training system for scale. Now, uh, I think that us kind of sharing our systems, going at it, picking it apart, and having a competitive contest to see who can you know be the example of adaptation i hear you say you're doing all these different things and i see your company as an adaptable company and if you want to survive in the marketplace if you want to future proof your business you need to be good at marketing you need to you need to be adaptable you need to have a brand you you know you you recognize that a long time ago um guys you, you need to come check us out at the win the storm conference we're going to follow it up and Anthony's going to come out to the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Anthony, I don't know if I told you, bro, but we're having fight night. I'm going to be the first personal development coach with a cage and a stage. And, uh, you know, you, you are a boxer. Wait a minute, you fight? Yeah, I fight. Uh, I'm a boxer. I, mean, I, don't have any, I don't have any I don't have any boxing fights yet. So, I mean, what what did you serve on the for the for for our country, Anthony? Yeah, I was actually on the Army boxing team at the last the last year I was overseas. I was on the Army boxing team. So that's when I got into boxing. And then uh, Thank when you I got out service, through college. Andy. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Oh, it's not necessary. But when I got out through college, uh, I stayed in the Golden Gloves just to stay in shape. And I'd fight, you know, I'd fight, you know, they'd set up a ring down in the basement of a bar over there on the east side of St. Paul. And we'd fight like once a month. I almost went pro, but I was entering grad school. I was going to college with black eyes every day, and it was just—it was getting to be too much. I got my bell rung the last time, but I still go in like hitting the bags once, you know, once a week, a couple times a week, sometimes just for twenty minutes. It's a great workout. Well, you might want to get in the ring with me, do a little exhibition match, old, old, old bull and young. I don't bull. know, man. I still, oh, I still got it. I'll get in the ring. How much you weigh? Two fifty. I don't care how much you weigh, dog. I'm one eighty-five. <laughs> That's a lot of weight behind that left hook. Hey, look, you got you got all the months to get ready. I, I, here's the deal: all of it is for folds of honor. You served our great country. We are blue collar entrepreneurs. We get to if we fail, if we fuck up, we get to wake up and try again. And someone died, a man or woman out there died for our right to do that. I read a book this year called "Fly Into the Wind" by Dan Rooney. He created this this actual uh, is one of the largest charities right now for veteran families. But uh, anyways, I'm going to give 20% of all ticket sales for this fight night to Folds of Honor. And uh, now I, I really, you know, if you, if, if you, if you want to come, it will definitely raise a lot of money and it will be what, great. What's the date again is this? What date? It's May 27th. Dustin Poirier is going to be there. UFC knocked out Conor McGregor. He, he you know, D- Dustin's actually friends with this guy that I'm doing some roofs with. His name's Tim Crater. He got into the roofing business. He's this MMA god out of Louisiana. And he sold $20 million in water mitt work. And so um, last year, Jorge was with 
at, at the conference. Um, but he trains with Dustin. Anyways, Dustin's going to come there. He's going to talk about uh, personal development. We're going to have some MMA fights. Um, if you'd like to do a boxing ep- exhibition, I would certainly be down. But I I'll tell think- you what, I would agree to it on one thing. One is okay. I got time to get into fighter shape, like three rounds or ten rounds. I do one round exhibition, three minutes. Yeah, dude. I don't care. Whatever it is. I, it's I want to get a percentage of ticket proceeds to the USDR, either whether I sell my own tickets. Yeah, dude. Absolutely, or dude. Or tie it in with yours somehow. But the USDR we'll has have, a big we'll, uh, we'll, 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 We'd be happy to ha- bring that message because, look, we had a big tornado come through. We want to run around giving people money. And we, I think that sometimes so many people will look focus on people who have insurance and the people that don't have money, they get neglected. And I, and I think it's wrong. Sign up. 16 ounce gloves or 12? I mean, 16 ounce gloves is good. 12. I've got a fight coming up with tens, but you know, it's up to you. Well, um, I think you might want 16s. That's good. It's fine. We'll it's soften all good. a little bit. Nothing can happen, bro. <laughs> it's fun. If you put me on, up, right. I'll wake up. I'll have a hard time doing my conference. It'll Remember now, I'm 49. So if I have a heart attack, I'm, you know, 36. I'm, I'm, I'm 36 years old. Better have some GL insurance on that, but that first round, hey, I'm, I'm 33, <laughs> man. So if you find somewhere for me, you know, I'll, I'll okay, take it. Okay, you want to fight too? What's your weight? What's your weight, bro? What's your weight? I'm 230 right now, but I'll oh, shit. No, shit. You better lose some weight, dog. How tall are you? <laughs> Come on, man. Come you on, you do a couple slice. <laughs> oh, shit, man. This has been I'll fun, guys. Like, we're going to have fights. We're going to have sales contests. We're going to have debates. Well, the Wolf of Wall Street at your conference is actually a huge mentor of mine. Part of my sales process, the five eyes with blue collar clothes, the fourth step is pretty much all Jordan Belfort. I would say Jordan Grant, Russell Brunson had the most influence on me as a sales coach, as a mentor. So being able to well, fucking. Why, why don't we throw you on, you know, in, in good faith collaboration? Why don't we throw you on as a moderator, the, you know, the million dollar producer panel that, that's your that's your that's your peeps. Throw you on as the uh, an, one of the moderator of the million dollar producer panel. I believe Jordan Belfort's coming on right after. You could high five him on stage. Hell yeah, dude! That's badass, dude. That's what you call collaborate to dominate. And if there's I one spot, but I want a spot on yours. You're you're here, dude. And when you come to mine, we're gonna we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna talk about you know some of the different aspects of what we do. And I think you know what, I believe that everybody can benefit. And uh, you know our mission is actually very similar. And I, and I commend your company for its results. I commend the solar. I commend all your other guys and women and gals that have, that have been behind you. You know, you've no, done I'll it. come to your show on one condition. What's that? Besides I'll go anyways. You got to fight. I think Dimitri's really salty about losing twice in a row to that arm wrestling contest. In my oh, you want to want to break my skinny little arms? You can break years, my arms. Bro, 2016, 2017. Oh, hey, you got to do the jujitsu class with me too. You got to, you got to let me put you to sleep. Get Dimitri on stage at yours for a rematch, the arm wrestling, because the only reason he's upset hey, we don't do arm wrestling, wrestling, arm wrestling twice. Grappling. I've never arm wrestled before in my life. And he came to me to I've my never... show to try to promote his arm wrestling contest, and I whooped him <laughs> twice on video. Hey, so check this out, Anthony. Here's the deal. So the bonus is the guys that come to the conference, that, that come to the fight night, there's a jujitsu and Muay Thai seminar. And this is, you don't have to get punched in the face. This is for rookies, for amateurs, this is for people to learn. This is for a little demo. But we're going to, there's going to be live rolling in jujitsu. And uh, that that's going to be before the fight. You know, okay? they do have counseling for all this pent up anger you have. Listen, dude, I, I, I gotta, I'm the one with the 400 employees. I still, and I'm carrying all the burden of an $800,000 payroll. Okay. This is how I find balance and happiness in my life. And no, stay I, out I, I love hitting the bags. It's a good, it's, it's therapy. It's, it, it is therapy, brother. And so I'm, I'm glad that we have that in, in common. And, and, and so uh, I just don't I, get, I haven't gotten a ring in a number of years, but you know, hitting the well, bags is still a good workout. Well, Maybe maybe it'll make you maybe you start training. Hard. <laughs> hey, for me, I, I I train hard, I party less, and if I punish myself in the gym, then I'm not gonna go wasted out there acting a fool. So you know that's that's for me like how I balance, you know, so, some of that other side because I was the guy at 25 years old that was a and even at 30 years old, even at 18 years old. Oh my god. Well, I'll tell you what, man, it's a. Uh... How long we've been talking here? We, we if we still got some viewers on, I'd like to throw out a little uh, promo for the viewers watching. The first, hell, I'll do fifty. Say first fifty. The first fifty that type in WTS since you're going, Lee. WTS. WTS. Yes. In the comments below. I put WTS. General mission ticket to win. Are you fucking kidding me? Fifty fucking free tickets. 
Like free and ticket. Share. Like and share. Those One two are fifty at the door. The first fifty that that like and share. Like and share. Comment Damn like dog, share. you're a genius. Comment like and share. That's right. My social media. They're counseling me right now. <laughs> Comment like, like and share. share. Whatever that means. And they drop WTS. My people will watch it. They can call. They get. They can register for free general mission ticket to win a storm. Lee's gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. We got Jordan Belfort. We got Jimmy Johnson, Hall of Famer, Herschel Walker, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, Ryan Stuman. If that wasn't enough, we also got Gas Monkey. If you like looking at cool cars, he's giving away a Mustang Mach 1 off the floor. So we're excited. We're excited to have you, Lee. First 50, that comment below, WTS, like and share. You guys better keep track of it. They get registered for a free general mission ticket Winter Storm Conference. That's in Dallas, February 14th, 15th, and 16th, and that's in three weeks. You know, it's my fucking home court, buddy. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to have a great time. I can't wait. It's going to be and great. Man, we be- are throwing a four-hour boot camp on day three of the conference. So let me know how many people want to show up. Uh, RSVP, you guys. It's going to be a lunch and learn. Boot camp for what? Solar. Solar oh. boot camp. That's how we're going to be late. Okay. <laughs> Here the sales contest begins, guys. <laughs> like it. Oh, no. yeah. 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 Sky Diamond. Solar sales contest. It's me. <laughs> hot. He's got a $50 million head start. I'm going to bust your ass, boy. Here we go. I'll see you. Go, in baby. See y'all later, guys. Y'all have a good one. Bye, guys. Booyah, baby.